Kane collapsed and didn't last very long and uh, we beat the hate in the street and going back down the road the next, uh, the next day. Uh, and our two day excursion turned into a one night and go back to we, le we learned a lot about the elements of the weather uh, that, that, we that night. It, it's quite funny, you, you can be here and it could be quite okay. Yeah, yeah. It was sort of like this, but up there. <laughs> the moment you go up there, you know, the wind will be rushing in and the temperature drop will be incredible. It was just this funnel of wind and it yeah. was dark, there was no option, we had to camp, couldn't find anywhere, found a flat bit in this sort of course eight or something ridiculous. Yeah, it's like a sort of like a natural uh, venturing up there between the, the two mm. bends, the wind just really whistles through. And, uh, and well, we also get it from Glen Orky over there. Hi folks, that's me just off the train well, about 25 minutes ago, had a wee chat with some guys that you'll, you'll see, well you'll definitely see at the start of the, this video. Uh, the shorter guy was Mark, he's a train driver, and the two taller uh, chaps were uh, Graham and Dave. I'm just saying the names otherwise if we don't say them now I'll probably forget. So at the back there is Ben Doreen. I might be back here next week with Billy either to do Ben Doreen or to hike to King's House. I think I'd probably prefer the hike to King's House and then get stuck into the Summer Monroe's after that cobbler and maybe back up here. Hi folks, been hiking for about 30 minutes since I got off the train. What you see at the back is the uh, Fleming estate, that's Loch Tuller. Hi folks, don't have long to go to the, get to the car park, fantastic out here, quite a few cars have passed, maybe, I don't know, 10, 11, but they're all going the, they're all going the opposite way, they're all heading out the way, I'm the only one that's heading in, that's the advantage of wild camping. I mean, I guess, well, I'm guessing a lot of them, or some of them were for the car park and they might have done some, some hiking or some hill walking or whatever. But obviously not camping. So they're just leaving and I'm just heading in. And I'll be staying for two nights. Invernan Hotel. Open for coffee, tea, snacks, and there's the bar that way. Hi folks, that's me at the car park. Took me about minus stops, about an hour, which is quite a bit quicker than I thought it was going to be. Midges are still here. There's the car park. Everybody's just leaving. I'm heading in. There's Loch Tulla. The other end. That's where I'm hiking. Into there. Heading round into that way. There's a the Victoria Bridge. Named after the train station, no doubt. That's me, really, I would say. That's me at the start of my hike now. There's a forest lodge. 
that way, uh, West Highland Way. That's the way I'm going, Glen King Glass. I seek not to know all the answers, but to understand the questions. folks off the path now at the gate through some rougher ground it's remarkably calm quiet look at that water barely there's not even a ripple I'll, I'll be quiet for a few seconds and let you listen Not a sound, hardly, in fact, basically not a breath of, of wind. Incredibly calm and quiet. What do you think, Matt? That bridge looks a bit dodgy. I'll take a chance. Just showing you the ground here. I know you look at it and might think, oh, it's a wee bit boggy. And I'm showing you it to, to tell you how unboggy it is compared with the, the previous trips. This place was, was a quagmire. It's been very dry. Well, there hasn't been much rain in Scotland. We've been having a bit of a heat wave. And certainly in terms of, in Scottish terms, we've had a heatwave for quite a while. That's why the midges are still, still here. There's an example of how dry it's been. That's usually a river. You, know, you certainly have to wade through it as I did in my previous uh, trips. It's basically just, it's basically dry. I mean, I've not got any water with me, so I hope the river up there, I'll definitely get water. If I need to get it out the loch, the loch, uh, loch Dochard, I prefer to get, you know, running water, but if I can't get that, then I'll just get it out the loch. A wee bit more water here. And there you go. Stepping stones. Over to the other side. Hope I can do it without falling in. That's me. Almost at my destination. Two options. In there. I've never camped in there, but in Tam, Tam Allen, his video, 
uh, we went uh, with Matt, they camped in there and previous two trips up there, just up and over there is Loch Dochard, so there's no much, you know, maybe 15 minutes difference, so I don't know what I'll do. I'll camp somewhere here tonight and then see how I feel. Feel it like packing up and moving. I'll go up up there and camp at Loch Dockard tomorrow night. And there's a bridge. I didn't have to cross it, Matt. So I wonder if you and Tam must obviously went a slightly different way over the the steps, the style, I mean. I didn't have to go over any style. I know we did that one time. We had to climb over stuff, but I just followed the river. I think because there's, no, and there's a river there. There's a raging river. I think because there's no water. I just basically walked in the riverbed. Right. We've got a couple of hours, an hour and a half of good light. I'll pitch my tent and then I'll need to get water. Tent's up. Just need to get water now. That's the next priority, and it is a priority. There's a bit of water in the light. Here for the night. This is the sky. I'm only, I'm only five minutes away from my tent. Right, folks, it's ten to eight. Got my tent pitched. I've got water. Got a sleeping bag in the mat. Out. Tent light, which is important today when it gets dark, you know, very quick. Make sure you get your tent light or a, a head lamp handy before you know it. It's dark and you're hunting around the dark for a light. Fantastic setting. Very nice temperature. We can spoil it. You might be able to guess, yes, they're still here and a wee bit of force as well. Absolutely no air. No breeze, I mean, absolutely calm. I think I said that in my last uh, hike. I did say that in my last hike. Every every time I, I, I pitch my tent, there's just no breeze whatsoever. But it seems that way. I need to go in. I'm just going to have to uh, go into the tent. I was going to make something to eat, but I mean, I've got a lot of, I brought a lot of snacks with me, you know, crisps, chocolate, some nuts, that sort of thing. I might just make that do the night. If the, if the wind doesn't pick up, which I don't think it will, just don't fancy sitting out here. Ah, getting. Eating alive with midges again. Hopefully tomorrow it's, there's a wee bit of a wee bit of wind. Right. Don't know if I'll shoot any more stuff. Knowing this light, I'll probably I'll get back to you tomorrow. I'm still alive with these midges.